welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm Rebecca Felgate, and we are taking a pretty crazy walk down history's lane as we discuss some of the worst decisions royals have made. Join me as we discuss the top 10 dumbest royals of all time. Coming in at number 10, we have our mate Prince Harry. I love a bit of Prince Harry, but he has proved that all the jewels in Great Britain can't buy you common sense. Our favourite flamehead royal struggled a little bit at school, although to be totally fair to him, he did have a chaotic childhood. As empathetic as we all want to be, dressing up as a Nazi to a costume party is a stupid thing to say the least, but especially stupid when your family represents the British nation. You know, the country that helped defeat the Nazis. Then a few years later he was photographed naked partying in Vegas. Oh Harry. Of course I'm sure that history will look kindly and laugh this off as silly mistakes he made in his youth. The same cannot be said for the rest of the royals on this list though. Coming at number 9 we have Marie Antoinette who is Queen Consort of France from 1774 to 1792. The last Queen of France, Marie Antoinette famously instructed her people to let the peasants eat cake, marking her as woefully out of touch with her people and swept up in a class divide she didn't care to address. Yes, the real quote was let them eat brioche, but that doesn't make it any less painfully bourgeois. Marie was either heartless or stupid, and honestly it seems like she was probably the latter. She spent huge amounts of money on clothes, jewellery and property. She did all of this while the rest of her country starved. She largely contributed to the rise of the French Revolution, which led to an entire downfall of the French monarchy. Coming in at number 8 we have Emperor Zengdi, who ruled China between 1505 and 1521. Zengdi was dumb, sure, but more accurately, he was insane. He inherited the throne aged 14, which may lend some explanation to his actions. He turned a zoo into a huge place to store beautiful women, creating a harem of mistresses. What's so stupid about that, Rebecca? It sounds like some kind of dream to some less desirable gentleman. Well, he actually forgot to feed them, so many of these beautiful ladies starved. He also went out hunting tigers and got himself so badly mauled that he had to regularly miss meetings while he recovered from his injuries. Oh, and one of my favourites, he decided to store gunpowder at the palace during a lantern festival, which absolutely resulted in the building burning down to the ground and I don't know what you expect when you keep gunpowder next to flames. He created an alter ego for himself and created a fake shopping district around his palace grounds so he could pretend to be a peasant. He's actually kind of whimsical, I love him. Coming in at number 7 we have King John of England England, who ruled from 1199 to 1216. King John, often called Mad King John, made many mistakes. He took noble women as mistresses, which was unacceptable during his day, where mistresses were usually lower class. When he married his second wife, he became so obsessed with her, he abandoned his duties to stay in bed with her. King John later entered ill-advised war with France and lost Normandy. He signed the Magna Carta and then went back on it, opening himself up to attack from the French. Didn't end well for him. Coming in at number 6 we have Christian VII of Denmark who ruled from 1766 to 1808. Christian became king at 18 and had a chronic masturbation problem. He would throw food at people at the dinner table and he would also leapfrog over people bowing down to him and also sometimes he would randomly slap people in the face. Again I kind of enjoy the sound of him, he sounds quirky, but the non-stop masturbation would really have to stop. Ugh. Coming in at number 5 we have Caligula who ruled the Roman Empire between 37 and 41 AD. A lot of people tread the line between dumb and crazy and Caligula is certainly one of them. He was ruthless and cruel but also bad crazy. This is one of my favourite stories. He attempted to make his favourite horse Incitus, which means Galloper, a priest and an ambassador. I mean a horse is a priest. Nay. He also built him a beautiful marble stable complete with chairs, but I guess the one problem was that old Galloper couldn't sit down because he's a horse. He also sent his men into the ocean to fight a war with the sea, or more specifically Neptune, the god of the sea. His soldiers just sat to kind of thrash their swords in the waves a bit, and yeah, it's very brutal. To be totally fair though, as crazy as this is, people did really believe in sea gods in those days. However, I do think taking on a god in a battle, as a mere mortal, is a very dumb move. A lesson to learn from Our Lady at number 4, don't off your husband and then marry the guy accused of killing him. That's right, up next we have the fierce but basic Mary 
Mary Queen of Scots who lived between 1542 and 1587. Mary is no Cersei Lannister, she's never had the brains for it. Mary was a rival to her sister Queen Elizabeth's throne. Initially she became Queen Consort in France which was a much safer place for her as Elizabeth was very suspicious of her. She then made the error of returning to the UK. She was more than likely involved in the death of her second husband Henry Stuart and then she married the guy suspected of his murder, the Earl of Bothwell. She had a very incriminating letter exchange with him and this turned the Scottish people against her. Then she made her third mistake by fleeing to England, the very place where her suspicious sister wanted to imprison her. Not the sharpest tool in all of the box, under her sister's watch she then wrote to anti protestant sympathisers who plotted Queen Elizabeth's death. So yeah, she ended up losing her head and I'm gonna say it was pretty much her own fault. Coming in at number 3 we have Charles I who ruled England and Scotland and Ireland between 1625 and 1649. Charles was his own worst enemy, he was vain and kind of a Brat. He was disliked by many of his people for being Catholic, then he tried to force a new form of prayer on the Scottish people, making him really unpopular. He then dissolved parliament on many occasions, attempting to rule on his own which made him even more unpopular and sparked a civil war that ended in his execution and the brief abolition of the monarchy, so not so smart. Coming in at number 2 we have Sultan Mohammed bin Tuluk who ruled Delhi from 1324 to 1351. This chap made the monumental mistake of of deciding to relocate his kingdom from Delhi to 1,250 kilometers south to Jalalabad. The move took years, and eventually he was unhappy with the new capital and decided he wanted to turn back. So then he marched them all the way back. In those days, that was a really, really, really long journey, and some people just didn't make it. His reign was met with 22 rebellions, and he managed to ruin all of Delhi's prior prosperity. It had been on par with Cairo as a world power. Finally, at number one, we have King Farouk the first, who ruled Egypt from 1936 to 1952. An absolute glutton who reportedly drank 30 cans of pop a day. This dude had loads of money. But he still liked to steal. He stole a watch from Winston Churchill, which didn't really go down too well. He then also shot lions in their cages at a zoo in Egypt, which is not cool. When the Nazis invaded Egypt, he even wrote to Adolf Hitler to thank him. Oh, and he also had the biggest porn collection in the world. At a boy. He was ostentatious and a known philanderer. In the end, he was forced to abdicate, and he decided to hold on to power. He would pass the crown on to his baby son, who was less than a year old. Dumb move. In the end. Farouk and his family were exiled, including the baby king. So there we have it, there have been some terrible decisions made by royals in the past. A lot of people on this list were very egotistical and it never ended well for them, so lesson learned, don't be a douche. Thank you guys for watching this video, what do you think the dumbest mistake on this list was? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also shall we make a dumbest rulers in general so we can include presidents and prime ministers and people like that? Let me know. Thank you guys for tuning into this video, I'm Rebecca Felgate, if you liked it and you found it educational make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend and stay subscribed for more fantastic lists. I'll see you next time.